Hey everybody, Sammy here, your host of the Digital Marketing Therapy Podcast, and I'm ready to pop some champagne and party. We are at 100 episodes. I can't believe it. It has been an amazing journey um, recording these podcasts for you, scheduling the interviews, getting everything pulled together, um, having so much fun with it. I just want to say thank you so much for... um, listening and and being there with me. We started this, our first podcast was released on April 24th, 2019. Um, And we've gone through different, you know, styles, iterations. We had Fast Fact Friday for a while. Um, But here we are, 100 episodes. Um, So I'm super excited and thankful and um, appreciate you guys going on um, this listening journey with me as we switched from, you know, content that's geared towards anybody who needs to do marketing to kind of niching down into the nonprofit space. Um, it's, it's, it's been an adventure and I hope just kind of a reminder to you that we are all always ever evolving in our organizations and what we do. And we are always, you know, pushing and challenging ourselves to do better, to serve more efficiently, to serve more people, to serve more humans, animals, the environment, whatever it is. And that we have the right to try things, test things, make mistakes, keep going, um, and the sky will not fall apart, right? So um, today, I wanted to talk about nine episodes um, that I have loved and that have withstood the test of time, some of them, um, and also some of the favorites it are included in there, some of the favorites that I know that you guys have really listened to a lot and enjoyed listening to Um So I'm going to talk a little bit about these nine episodes and hopefully you'll go back and revisit them and get re-inspired by some of the things that we discuss in these topics Um, and keep your digital marketing in your businesses growing and get more visibility. Um, That's really what we're here to do with this podcast is to really help you grow, to really help you make marketing easier, less um, nerve wracking, um, to ditch that imposter syndrome where you feel like maybe you're not... um, um, as good as some of the other people that are out there or, or whatever, all the things, right? Um, we are here to support you in that. And if you ever have topics that you would love for us to talk about, um, please hit us up. Um, there's a form at the bottom of the firstclick.net website um, where you can put that information in there on the podcast. Um, and, you know, just, just let us know how we can support you because we are here for you. So, With that, let's just hop right into the episode and and get things going. You're listening to the Digital Marketing Therapy Podcast. I'm your host, Sammy Bedell Mulhern, and each week I bring you tips from myself and other experts, as well as hot seats with small business owners and entrepreneurs to demystify digital marketing and get you on your way to generating more leads and growing your business. Okay, so I want to start off by just saying um, I mentioned earlier about the evolution and how we grow, change, and evolve and um, expand and learn. Um, you're going to see that also because um, our show notes have evolved and changed um, as we've gone, and we haven't yet had a chance to go back and clean them all up. So, just another example of um, being real and raw, and you know, still appreciating where you've come from, old blog posts, old whatever, old emails, old annual reports that you look at that maybe you're like, oh my gosh, you know, we've come so far and celebrate that instead of cringe. So I'm just going to throw that out there because I'm learning and having this lesson play out for me as I record this episode as well. But that I will also be linking up all of these episodes in the show notes. So please make sure you head on over to the firstclick.net forward slash podcast um, to check out the show notes so that you can listen to all of these amazing episodes. So the first one I want to mention is, oh, like one of our originals. So it's episode six. Um, this is with Sarah Cook um, from Wellness Writers Pro. She was web, uh, I'm sorry, she was ND Penn. Um, now she's Wellness Website Pro, but she's a story brand certified writer. And she just had such great information on how to really make your homepage on your website pack a punk punch when it comes to copy. So what are some things you should think about? What are the most important things to have on your website um, homepage? 
And how can all of this help lead people to diving deeper, potentially making donations or what have you. So she shares a lot of really awesome information. Um, and this has been one of our most popular podcast episodes. Now, granted, it's been around the longest, um, but it is amazing. So episode six, um, four essential homepage copy tips with Sorry Brand certified writer, Sarah Cook. She is incredible. And what you're going to hear too throughout some of these episodes is us talking, you know, more specifically to nonprofit organizations sometimes and not in others. Um, but I really want to challenge you in that the, the concepts are still the same. So what works in the nonprofit space or what works in the for-profit space, excuse me, um, will work really well in the nonprofit space. You might have to make a little tweaks here and there, but don't feel like these need to be completely separate styles of marketing because that's just not the case. Our audiences are showing up in the same places. Um, and so let's take some of these actions. So the copy and the way that she talks about it, um, I think you'll really find find impactful. And I know that I love to re-listen to this episode um, whenever I can because I always rem- remind myself of something new every time. Okay, so the second one is episode 63, Time to Jump Into LinkedIn. And we chatted with Anthony Blattner from Modern Media all about LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is one of those platforms that I feel like people don't find enough value in. And when done the right way, it's a great place to find your donors. It's a great place to find um, people that care about your cause. It's a great place to find employees. Like it can be a really impactful platform for nonprofit organizations, for all organizations. Um, and they keep adding new features to it all the time. So I'm sure that there's new features that have come out um, since we recorded this episode because um, it was recorded quite a while ago. But, um, you know, there's events, there's um video, there's all sorts of things, um, putting up articles. There's so many ways that you can utilize LinkedIn, um, and not have to create specifically for the platform, but just to, um, share what you already have going on on that platform as well. Again, this was, um, another popular episode, uh, that we did oh, almost a year ago. Um, but definitely check it out. Um, and let me know if you're, on LinkedIn, if that's something that you're you're in, let's connect. Let's let's chat. Um, okay, so we're getting through these already. Episode twenty four: uh, Sales Funnels with Cody Birch. Cody Birch is the founder of Red Anchor Marketing, and um, you know, sales funnel is one of those things that. Um, I feel like it's one of those words that people get stressed out about. Like, how do I create a sales funnel? Oh my gosh. Then I have to have all these moving pieces. I have to have all of these um, email automations and I have to have all these marketing triggers and it can be overwhelming. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. And you might be thinking, well, um, why would I want to talk about sales funnels? Like I'm fundraising. So think about this episode in the, from the standpoint of, um, donor. Like how do I get somebody from being interested in my organization at the top of funnel to really just at the end of the day, choosing to give their hard earned money to me. Um, and that's really all the sales funnel is, is your donor journey, right? What's your donor journey look like? And if you haven't mapped it out, it might be something good to do. Um, again, it doesn't have to be super fancy. It can be on a regular piece of paper and you just write down, like, these are the things that we're doing to get people to know, uh, know about us. Maybe you're running Facebook ads. Maybe you're um, asking your volunteers to reach out to people they know. Um, maybe you're asking your donors to introduce you to people you know. Like there could be different activities at every different stage. Um, so this was a great episode. Again, some one that a lot of you guys have said it has been helpful for you. And so I highly recommend checking that out if that's something you guys are in the mood to work on in your organization. Um, and I want to pause there and say, um, just because I'm telling you to listen to these nine episodes doesn't mean you need to listen to all nine episodes, right? So let's make sure that you're focusing on the ones that are going to make the biggest impact for you right now. Like what are the things that you can take action on right now? The rest of it, it might not be ready for you. You might not need it. Don't worry about it. Um, make sure you're just focusing on the things that are going to help you take action. 
Okay. Um, the next one is personally uh, a super fun one and why I included it on this list. Um, episode 58. I did episode 57 and 58 with my dad, Tom Bedell. And, um, you know, it was recorded in a time when COVID was really ramping up. We didn't know, you know, what things were going to turn into, how things were going to evolve. Um, but we knew that COVID was going to change the way that we do business. Um, we knew that it was going to force more people to get online. We knew it was going to force more people to change the way that they engage with their customers and donors, the way that they provide products and services to their customers and donors. Um, and so episode 58 is part two, where we all talk about innovation. Um, and it was just so fun. How can we innovate inside of our businesses to do things differently? Think outside the box and see better results. How can we trust and try new things and um, see what happens. Because I think 2020 forced a lot of organizations to do that, to just see what happens. And some did it better than others. Um, And so I just, this is one of my favorite episodes. And I am so thankful to have my dad as one of my business mentors and role models, and just to have him as, as my dad. Um, So uh, this is one that I will say, I think maybe you should just listen to just because it might inspire you to think a little bit differently in how you do things. So that's episode 58. Um, my dad in business part two innovation. Um, if you want to listen to part one, you can do that as well. Um, where we just talk about entrepreneurship, which is also a fun topic. Now you guys know that podcasting is my content creation of choice. So what would it be if I didn't have on my list a podcast about podcasting? (laughs) Um, So if any of you are thinking about or interested in starting your own podcast, um, absolutely hit me up. I always love to geek out and talk about podcasting and formatting and how we do everything. There's so many ways to do it. Um, But I also had Crystal Profit join me on episode 28 to talk about starting your own podcast. And she goes through so many things um, with regards to the tech that you need um, or don't need, how to format it, all, all of the things. It's a really great podcasting 101 episode. So if that's something you've been thinking about, I highly recommend checking out episode 28. Remember that podcasting can be as, you know, easy or as complicated, just like anything as you want it to be. So you can easily uh, create small episodes that require little editing, um, pop them up. You don't have to do a show notes page. You can do a show notes page, like all the things you can do it in the way that best fits the personality of you and your organization, right? Do you interview people? Do you do solo episodes? Like, Do you, you know, some people push episodes out three times a week, which I find to be crazy overwhelming. We did two a week for a while and that was crazy overwhelming. So we're down to one a week and it's been great. Um, We have a combination of solo episodes and interview episodes and, you know, so you can really just make it what you want. So episode 28 podcasting, um, I really like it because for me to sit here and talk to you guys, um, is much easier than and takes less time than it does for me to sit down and write a long form blog post, even though it's the exact same information. Some people might be the same with being on camera and video. So it's really all about picking and choosing the content that feels good for you and your organization. Um, I love podcasting. So if you do too, then definitely check out episode 28. Okay, so then now to go to kind of a mindset shift. So like we talked about earlier, um, COVID definitely um, made us all flip and figure out how to do things a little bit differently. Um, But it's not just COVID that can make our plans change um, in our businesses. And um, one of my good business friend colleagues, Kelsey Chapman, um, had a bunch of clients that she was working with on Instagram. When the Instagram algorithm changed and they changed some of their policies, her entire business went from, you know, great to nothing, like literally nothing overnight. Um, so at episode 27, she comes to talk about how she pivoted, how she took that, um, you know, what could have been just 
the end of her entire business, how she flipped that and moved forward and continued to grow and change. So that's episode 27. Um, and it's just really inspiring. Um, and I think a good reminder, um, and a good, uh, a good reminder for us to have these contingency plans in place. So if something happens, how do you, how do you go into crisis management to just, you know, communicate with your donors or to communicate with your team or to get something out to the press? Like having all of these things in place will help you not stress when some, when something happens, something will happen at some point in your organization's lifespan, right? Um, whether it's a board member, um, and there's legal action being taken again uh, against them, and you have to deal with that now. Um, as far as how people are going to perceive your organization, um, maybe it is a project that you're working on falls through, and so then you need to be able to, you know, go back to the donors that supported that project, and you know, say, okay, well, now here's how we're going to pivot the funds so that, you know, you, you don't have to give the money back, you know, yada, yada, yada. We could go on and on. So this is a great episode just to live in these things that you cannot control, have a plan to figure out how to move forward, and then move forward. Um, I think it's a great lesson for all of us to hear because these things happen and we tend to feel, um, frustrated. I mean, like how many times it's something as little as like, I sent out an email with a typo in it. And then somebody writes you and says, Hey, there's a typo. And you, you know, you get in your own head about it. Um, and it, in the end of the day, that's not really going to make or break how you're successful in your organization. So I love having a plan. I love thinking about what, you know, what our communication looks like and how we handle things worst case scenario so that you don't have to, um, worry so much about it when it, when it happens, you're ready to go. Okay. And she's just, Kelsey's just an amazing human and, um, she's so inspiring. And I think you'll just love hearing her take and how this, you know, affected her, um, shutting down her business and how she was able to move on. And she's doing spoiler alert. Um, she's doing great by the way, just launched her book, um, about mentorship. So I'll make sure to link up her book in the show notes. Cause she does reference it in the episode and it is great. It's incredible. Okay. Now for the next episode, I think we're on what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're on episode seven of the nine that we're highlighting. So you know that I am all about websites. I'm all about conversions on your website so that you can wake up in the morning and see new donations coming through. Um, cause that just gives us all happy answers, right? So um, episode 75 is with Michelle Freschetti of GiveWP, and she is here talking about ways to make your donation page stand out and how to really get it um, to where people are engaging with it, giving you money, some things to think about when it comes to your donation page. Um, we love it. It's great. We love GiveWP. Shout out. We are. We are affiliates of GiveWP, but we love it. Um, there's lots of different platforms that you can use, so it doesn't have to be GiveWP, but um, the, the way that she's talking about how to utilize your donation page um, and how to tell a story and how to, you know, use forms to track content and or contacts, um, it doesn't matter what platform you use. All of these strategies and tools that she's talking about are beneficial to everybody, so... I do think, just like I said, um, a couple of these are must listens. I would say this is a must listen too. <laughs> I mean, maybe I should have just said, go ahead and listen to all nine because they're all pretty good. Um, so sorry about that. Backtracking a little bit, right? So give WP episode 75, maximizing your donation page. Um, and then shortly after that, we recorded episode 78 with um, Gabe Cooper of Virtuous. He's the founder and CEO of Virtuous. And Virtuous is a responsive CRM and marketing platform. And what he talked about was um, how to treat all donors like major donors. Um, and especially thinking about um, your monthly giving campaigns and your monthly giving uh, contacts. So how can you um, retain those donors and turn people into monthly donors and keep people coming back for more, um, regardless of 
whether they give $5 a month or $500 a month, because we know, you know, you have that opportunity then to walk them up the ladder um, and get them to give more long term. So he's got great ideas, simple automations, um, ways to make it personal um, and how to make it more about your donors and less about you. Another really impactful episode episode of Virtuous is doing some incredible things within the CRM marketing space um, and has lots of great opportunities there. And so they've seen a lot of data. They've seen a lot of things work um, and just a wealth of knowledge. So I really appreciated that conversation with Gabe um, at Virtuous. So episode 78, treating all donors like major donors, something we all strive to do, but probably don't do as well as maybe we should. So it's a good reminder and some good action steps that you guys can take to get back on. Okay, so the last one that I want to talk about with you guys, and then I'll let you get to listening, is episode 87. So this is a more recent one, um, but I wanted to end with this one because uh, there's so much hustle and bustle that's going on. Um, There's so much stress. Uh, There's, you know, we all are living in our own little bubble of the things that we have to get done every day. And remembering just to pick up the phone, call a donor and just ask how they're doing um, might not be at the top of your list. Um, Treating your donors with empathy uh, is something though that I think makes a huge impact and sets you apart from all the other organizations. And Ali Camaletti joins me on episode 87 to really talk about how to use empathy with your donors. Um, And it's just a great reminder because it's also like, how can we use empathy with each other? How can we use empathy with our coworkers, um, with our families, with our friends, with our colleagues? Um, How can we show up in a way that provides a safe space for people to feel the feels and for us to feel the feels. So um, it is a more recent one, but I just think it's such a good one. Um, We had such a great conversation and I really appreciate um, the examples that Ali shares in this episode of ways that you can speak to your donors on the phone, how you can use it in your annual appeals or your letters, how you can use it in your emails and your social media posts. Um, So just a great one to end with, to remember to be kind to each other and have empathy and talk to each other um, and not have judgment in comparison. So those are the nine episodes that um, I wanted to make sure we talked about on this episode or on this hundred episode celebration. So I hope you're popping champagne with me and I'm not really popping champagne because I'm recording this at nine in the morning, but um celebrate with me. And I would love to hear what some of your favorite episodes have been. And again, what types of content you would love to hear more about what would be impactful for your organization, because you know, we're planning on being around for 100 more. So you can leave those at the firstclick.net. You can leave them in a review on Apple Podcasts. You can leave them in our Facebook group, which is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the first click. Whatever it is, um, let me know which of these nine was your favorite. And if there's one that we should have put on the list uh, that we didn't. Um, But I so appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for listening. And um, I just hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.